awesome. It's Amy. Hi, Tanya. <laughs> like the highlight of my day, really. <laughs> Yeah, so far, this is way, way above the other thing I did today, which was go to Wegmans in my SWAT suit, you know, <laughs> wearing like dish gloves and my, my winter hat to cover my hair because a germ could get on my hair and my mask. And so, yeah, so I, and then I came in and washed everything that I was wearing. So it's like a whole hazmat operation, just going to the grocery store. But you have a Wegmans, which is kind of awesome. So we do, and it's pretty well stocked. It's pretty well stocked, wow. so we're good. Yeah. I wish I could say that. Yeah, you're way out. How are the stores doing out there? It's keeping well, up. Well, first great. of all, Sydney doesn't let me go. <laughs> well, good. He thinks I'm yeah. not as good with germs as he is. So um, he's in charge of communicating with all germs. Uh, so yeah, he, so am I. <laughs> Because Matthew's terrible at it. <laughs> There's, there has to be a good one and a bad one in every family. I think so. And then, you know, the good one is always hacking the other one. Did you take your shoes off at the door? That's you... exactly what he does. Yes. That's... <laughs> yes. Sydney, I... And I will, Sydney and I will meet after this call and <laughs> we'll talk about you. <laughs> and, and how I just don't care and I'm not tidy enough and but it's okay mm, yeah I'm fine with it somebody has to be the <laughs> yeah the rainbow the, star flower <laughs> we, you need a rainbow star flower and a hazmat team <laughs> right now <laughs> so we've reversed roles usually I'm the rainbow star flower that's but, true but this time it, it's Matt that's true yeah so you seem like you're doing great today I'm doing great. Well, I'm doing great every day. Oh, yeah. Okay. The, the, um, I don't know if I told you offline, off camera, that, you know, I don't, this is what, how I live normally. Like, we don't, the only real difference for, for Matt and I, we, who both, we both work from home, right? So, you know, he's an architect. So his whole practice is at home. He has three big clients in right now. So he's still able to work. Are they still, um, they're still doing what they're well, they're in the design phase. So they're, they're designing, right? Um, he can't measure. He has a new client just speaking from in that field, right? Because people are always interested. So he has a new client call right before the, what are we calling it? The shelter in place in New York. And um, he was going to go measure this week, measure their facility. Um, and he can't. He, He's not willing to take that risk. And I think they're out in the hardest hit area of Brooklyn in the Orthodox community out there. And so he's decided not to, well, I told him he's not. I said, you've decided not to go. Right. <laughs> As Matt Lady said, you're not going. Yeah, no, you're not, you're, or you're not coming home, basically. Right. Um, yeah, but so he, so we came up with this sort of ingenious idea because normally the architect comes and measures the space but he's going to do FaceTime with them and show them how to measure the space. Right. And then he can begin the project. So little things like that are like, we're in, we're ingenious and we're creative beings. We're going to figure it out. The yep. human race, you know, I love it. I'm but actually it is, doing a remote photo session with someone who needs yeah, it for her website. I, and I she, heard that. How? So she's going to hold the camera. Just the way that Matthew's teaching someone to hold the tape measure, I will teach that. So the, the camera is the computer. So I'm limited by the technology, but that's not what makes a picture. That's not, you know, it's not just the picture taking device. It's where are you sitting? How are you yeah. dressing? How are you leaning? Uh, yeah. What are you communicating visually in all kinds of ways? And then sure, I'll, I'm going to snap it through the, you know, once, wow. once I direct her to the place I want her to be, um, then she has to stop looking at her picture of herself. Cause you know, when we're doing this, we're sort of, I'm looking at you and you're looking at me, but neither one yes. of us is looking at the camera. And like this is, am I looking at the camera now? You're looking at the camera, but it looks 
<laughs> you're all zoned looks, out there. Looks, so, oh, really? If I look there, it looks like I'm well, not looking at you? Sort of staring at it. But if I were to look at the camera, like I'm looking right now, but I'm still talking as if I were talking to you. Like I'm not looking at it like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the camera. Oh. <laughs> 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 I, yeah. I've been watching Jimmy uh, Fallon do that a lot, looking up his nose with his kids falling all over him. He's been, he's yeah. been great. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, oh, that's the plan. It's, you know, it's not, it's just for a web quality photo and sort of a headshotty thing, but she doesn't have anything recent. So uh, yeah, I think it's doable. Yeah, of course. Why not? It's, it's, you know, if you need it, if you need it because you just put up the website and you need it to be that recent, then yeah. And she doesn't really have photos that communicate uh, who she is and what she's doing now. A lot of people don't. So just give me one technical, like, cause I can't quite, so she's holding the camera so, and you're but, looking so, at no, her? It's not gonna be a camera, it's going to be a laptop. Oh, uh, like this, so. It's gonna be like this, yes. Okay. Only we're going to do it in the, uh, you know, the small screen, big screen version. So right now mm -hmm. I have you side by side with me. Yes, me too. But uh, we'll, we would do it with, uh, you know, the little person on the top and the big picture below. And then I will, when I get her right, I will do screenshots of what I see. Oh, of course. Right? Right. Of course. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, we I've may have before. when I was, when I was in that six month thing with Kyle Cease, Mm -hmm. We had, you know, we had our 50 people, but he always had it set up so that, oh no, I guess I had it set up so that whoever was speaking was the big picture. Most of the time it was him. One day he brought on. Because <laughs> he's speaking. Right, he's speaking. <laughs> so one day he brought on his daughter, you know, she's like, and, and so he was just playing with her. And I was like, screenshot, 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 screenshot. Wow. And that's how I shoot anyway, right? So. And then I, um, then I reduced the size. I cropped it a little. I made it black and white. I did a little Photoshop like I would do anyway. And I sent it to him and he made it a profile photo. Like, cause it was beautiful. It was just a beautiful moment. It's, you know me, that's, it's all about, it's about the moment. It's none of it's really about the, the camera part, but yeah, you need the camera no. part to record the image. Yeah. I mean, as, as one of your subjects, I can say that when I forgot the camera was there is when we got the shots. It right. was about you having a conversation with me yeah. and you sort of hid the camera because you could see I was afraid of the camera, Right. I think. And when you dropped the camera sort of down low and just started shooting, and then I got sort of comfortable with the camera. I don't know exactly why it worked, well, actually, I stopped shooting. So, um, because sometimes I just need to be in the conversation. And it's during the conversation that I see the thing that I want to capture. And then I either have to ask you to do it again, or I just have to see it again. And almost always I see it again, because I'm always capturing the thing that is you. So you're doing it. Yeah. You're doing it all the time. You just don't know about it. So I have to put the camera down so that you can be you again. Because <laughs> <laughs> instead of what are, what do we turn into? What's it, from your point of view? Like what, what are we when we're not? Um, I call it the force field. You know what? I, the shield, the force field. Um, there are a couple different ways that I describe it. Um, one was that moment. I don't know if I ever told you this story, but it's pretty great. Um, because this is how I learned what it was that I was doing. Um, so Eason gave me, or he showed me a photo of Malala. He had made it into his business card because he was you know, running the Malala Fund, some part of it. And he showed me this picture of her and he said, I think you gave me the wrong image. And I said, I, I looked at his card and I said, that's not even my picture. And he looked at me like, how do you, what are you talking about? How do you know that? Or like, of course it's your picture. <laughs> you know, you were there, you took all the pictures. And I said, no, no, no. There was one other photographer in the room, same light, same background, same outfit, same, same, same. 
everything. And I could take one look at the picture and tell it wasn't mine. Well, how? And for me, I felt like there was a force field in like between her and the photographer. There was something mm. in her eyes, like an energetic shutting down that happened that I could see. Now, he could only say, I don't know what it is, but this is the wrong frame. And wow. I was like, it's the wrong energy. It's a whole other level of what we're talking about. And um, so that's, I have to edit the same way as well. You know, when I'm looking through a thousand pictures or hopefully it's only a hundred of a person, I'm looking for that flash of that moment when the force field dropped and they could just be themselves. Um, and I also said this about wedding photography, like one of the reasons I stopped doing it is um, because I felt like people weren't present anymore and it had more to do with the guests than anything else. And my observation was that guests were bringing their phones more like everybody wanted to take a picture so what they're doing is they're putting up their phone which is this is the force field now and they are blocking because a wedding is an emotional moment right so yeah, when i can see get that. uncomfortable and i noticed this way before people had phones i noticed this at weddings like i would walk around taking pictures during cocktail hour if people noticed me almost always they would grab their drink. Just a weird, like, I feel uncomfortable, I'm gonna have a drink. Um, it also happens, um, I don't know if you ever notice in conversations where people are chatting and they're laughing or whatever they're doing, and then uh, somebody tells the punchline, everyone laughs, and they drink. Same thing, it's like a feeling, and then a like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I'm comfortable feeling that feeling. Yeah. It's the empty, so, I call it the empty hole, right? The, filling the, the empty the, hole, right? So, yeah, it's, yeah. So at a wedding, I, I, the reason I had to stop shooting them, or one of the reasons I wanted to stop shooting, is because I was so uh, frustrated with the way that people weren't present anymore. And a lot of that was about um, iPhones. They were putting their energy into the gadget and like, blocking their energy and putting up the force field that was a literal force field mm -hmm. um and i couldn't see them anymore i couldn't see the people i couldn't find the intimate moments i i couldn't feel the connection because it was it was all vanishing and they're not so from my point of view they're not there because they're taking a photo for later so their 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 presence is going into the future into the right the Correct. collection of photos which they'll come visit later as a memory but they weren't actually there yes and right so they'll say that all the time yeah. like and it so okay as you're saying that of course i'm thinking about my mother which it, it makes me crazy sometimes <laughs> but that's that's what she does you know she there was a time we were looking at apartments and she was so busy taking the photos of the apartment that at the end of the day she couldn't remember which apartment we'd been to. And I would say, but don't you remember the one that felt like this or the, uh, the you know, the light was like this and the, the flow, because I was thinking about the, how do I feel in this space? And you can hear it in your language. Yes. And yeah. she, she was, um, well, she's also a real estate broker. So she's like, she's thinking uh, floor plan layout. You know, I just want to see this and think about it later. Yeah. And I wanted to feel it in the moment. It's funny, I looked back and I realized I didn't even have pictures of a lot of the spaces I liked. Um, well, that's what happens to me. You know, everywhere I go, if I'm actually present to what's happening, I get home and I'm like, ah, I ne remember when I came yes. out to, to see you? Yes. There was not one photo of us. We got together and we didn't take any pictures. I think we were in the same neighborhood mm -hmm. for five days, seeing each other every day for you know, lunch or a walk or, and neither of us got to take a picture. Isn't that so funny? So yeah, yeah. Like a that, good, it's a good sign. It's I know. A good sign when we're not taking pictures, but then I wish I had the pictures. I know, me too. <laughs> but we have the real memory, and we, like we were both really there. I really remember talking to you. I really remember the dinner we had. So, right. 
so that it's a different sort of memory. Yeah. You know, I, I'm always thinking about memory, and my, my work is all about memory. Did you hear that loud noise go by just then? Truck? Yeah. It was a motorcycle, oh. I think. Some, someone up our street owns a motorcycle, and I think he's just going back and forth as a way of being out. Oh. So we may hear it again. Should we tell him that's not exercise? <laughs> yeah, he probably doesn't know. <laughs> oh my goodness. But isn't that funny that that's what interrupted our conversation about presence? Yeah. That guy. Yeah. Making noise up and down the block. Well, and it's interesting that was um that was the thing that Sue said to me when we were in India together. She's the one who said why don't you do a book about photography as a spiritual practice Yeah, that I've just never seen anyone so hyper aware in the present and vigilant. And, but I was, I was literally synthesizing all of it. So for instance, she said, Oh, can you take a picture of me and Lisa here? And we were on some street somewhere and, and I and she, oh, and she said, what would be a good place? And I said, oh, I love this street. I've been watching rickshaws go by like for the last half hour. And she's like, okay, great. Let's take a picture here. And I said, well, hold on. I need the rickshaw. <laughs> 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 so so I, I put them where I wanted, you know, I, I had the background. This was, I always say, this is my first lesson in photography. It's always subject lighting background. In any oh. configuration. Oh, okay, wait, all right, wait. Background. Okay, go yeah. ahead. So, so you, want, you want nice light, you want mm -hmm. a background that, uh, I, I say that a f uh, background informs, it can be 50% of your photo, it can be more, um, it can be less. Uh, but I, do, I never take it for granted. So most people, when they wanna take a picture, they just, they just stop where they were when they thought Oh, I want to take a picture. Oh. Which is responding to the impulse, but it's not being thoughtful. And and I always say the difference between a professional and a amateur is we take one more step to think, but we do it so fast that it becomes second nature. So I'm always thinking subject lighting background. What's my lighting? Um, I think that was my second video on these things where I walked around the room just to show how I analyze a room. Um, yeah, but it isn't also, you have the eye, like I noticed my daughter, uh, who is a painter and a filmmaker, has a particular way of seeing things as if in a frame. So like she'll, she'll easily say to me, mom, you know, go like that or go like that or put your whole head in the picture or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't see that way. I, I showed up like, well, how was I like this when we started talking, right? And it was when you started talking about the background and then, and you know, then I'm like, oh yeah, okay. It's but you already had the flower and the, <laughs> <laughs> like you. Right, it just happened. Like I didn't, that's how, what's behind me. Oh, I thought you were just intimidated about getting on the call with me. So you set it up all perfectly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, no, but I, I mean, full disclosure, I'm doing Zoom calls a lot now, so I know how I like what I like to be behind me. Right. And I, like, I know I need to wear a color and not my usual gray thing that I wear around the house. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Just like that. I've been saying that to my friend Deb. She's been, she does a daily call and boy, oh boy, when she hits a color that works for her, I tell her. I'm like, that outfit was great. That, wear more of that color. And you yeah. know, she does. She's actually been, she said, oh, I've been working with someone on my, as uh, you know, styling and color. And I thought, well, it shows. And that's fantastic. You know, it's, I know everyone thinks, oh, I just want to be me. And I just want to show up as I am. And I'm like, that's great. But you, you are a person who makes choices. So let's make some choices that amplify you whatever you you think you is. I mean, you is everything. I am everything from, you know, my pajamas to my naked to my black to my horrible uh, tunics that I used to wear over yoga pants. Like, 
I am all of that, but let's edit me and make me like the best version I can come up with. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's really what you, you're, I remember you and Annette working on like a project where you would help someone what to wear, how to do their hair, makeup, jewelry, all those choices. Mm -hmm. And then you would work with them on the, the photo. Right. But I, I'm thinking about from my, again, coming back to my perspective, like when someone says, I just want to be me, what I hear is I want to be comfortable. Right. I, I want to, I don't want to like, be like that in front of the camera. So my best way to do that is to not make any choices, to just show up. That's what I hear in someone saying that. Interesting. Not to try, not to put too much on. Interesting. Uh, and that, the, it's funny, the person I just came from, uh, right before I came to see you, we just had this conversation. Because really? Yes. The, um, without, without sort of revealing too many details, um, you know, she's going to be more and more on camera. And she was recently photographed and published in a magazine. And my first thought was this sort of cringe about the, the choices that somebody made, some, whether it was the photographer or the subject. Mm -hmm. And she's like, her, her response was, oh, but that's me. That's I uh -huh. like that. I'm like, no. That's not true. I mean, that's one version of you, but I've seen you dress for a party or look beautiful like on any given day. Um, and it's funny because right now we're watching celebrities in their most dressed down version. Yes, exactly. Life, right? And we're watching regular people step up. <laughs> this, this, this is yeah. my observation. Like, uh, you know, nobody wants to yes. see Tanya in pajamas. <laughs> well, but Jimmy and, Fallon would be awesome in pajamas. And he has been all week <laughs> in yeah. his playhouse out in the Hamptons. Yeah. But, the, but all of them, Alec Baldwin, um, Jennifer Garner, I watched her. Like, I'm fascinated by seeing them. You know who's not doing it great? Stephen Colbert. He's not doing it great because he's still, he's still, like, he had his suit on in the bathtub. Like he's making a joke out of how he's showing up as the host, gotcha. but he's at home. I'd like to it's you still know, a character. Yeah, he's still the character of Stephen. Yeah, which he does. That, you know, I love him dearly, and I, I can't wait for them to be back. I think they're back last night, right? But all that said, okay. he's still like maybe it's that what you're describing as that the shield. What do you call it? The shield. Yeah. Okay. Well, or in his case, it's a char it is a character um, that isn't him. So maybe he's not breaking the wall. So yeah. Speak. Um, yeah. Or maybe he doesn't want to, or maybe he not, doesn't know how, or whatever. None yeah. of my business. But so, I'm I'm thinking about when I work with a client that I know what you mean by that because the I work on the phone often. I don't even see someone, right. and I can hear. There's a preliminary five minutes usually is as long as it takes, but there's a, a, they're afraid of me when they arrive. They're afraid what I might see, what I might say, you know. So it's the same sort of mask or wall. And so my job is to, like you, bring them sort of into a place where they're more comfortable with me so they can trust me. And I think, so we're really talking about trust, aren't we? It, we are talking about trust. And that's so interesting that you say that they're afraid of you because you know they're afraid of me. I show up with a weapon, right? Right. <laughs> but I never thought about that. Like, they're afraid to talk to you. Yeah, I show up with a weapon, too. Yeah, because you have, yeah. you have um, it's not even x-ray vision. It's uh, x-ray knowing or something. Which I mean, I don't me, know what it is yeah. for me. That's <laughs> the most appealing thing ever. You know, that's it's one of your most fabulous, wonderful qualities. Is that you? Um, I know. I know you struggle to tell anybody what you do, and <laughs> there's no answer to what Amy does. Amy takes 
Hmm, what does Amy do? Amy, t for me, in my... Yeah, mind. it's better from your end, because when I say it, I say how it feels to me, but right. that's not how it feels to you. Right, so the way it feels to me is that you take a person's story, um, which is like a big ball of yarn or something, and it's mm. all tangled up. It's a complete... Um, mm. Yeah, our story is a big ball of yarn. And you start to untangle and pull on different threads and and then you you also but you also take the whole ball and twist it around and see it from other sides. So so I usually say that Amy will take your story and give you a new perspective. Interesting. Um, that's probably the shortest way I could say it. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's so <laughs> unlimited what you do, and it's it is like deep internal work. It's part of your amazing listening skill. So you you. you listen. You listen the way I see. Maybe. Maybe I never thought about that, but you mm -hmm. you listen, and then you start to hear the other, the something else what doesn't feel right what doesn't fit also so i i when you say something else i think you mean the magic the something else the illumination the, i call so I it see, the magic whatever yeah right i see that too i i just feel certain things feel true and certain things don't and so what i begin to i think i've told you this at least once when we've talked together um i begin to I begin to feel guided to ask questions about the parts that don't feel true because in those those are the spaces where we've stashed our pain and those are the those are the um they're like little bound packets um that we store away like like chipmunks or right or squirrels for later because the psyche always wants to come back and heal itself so mm -hmm. it's like oh this hurts too much now but i'll just save it and I'm going to stick it here over in the breast, or I'm going to stick it over here in the belly or in the leg. Or, and then if we don't deal with it as an emotional experience or as an experience of fear or, or um, grief often or outrage, um, it'll come up as a symptom. And then when, as we meet the symptom in that part of the body, um, that brings the feeling up as well. So there's still more opportunity. It doesn't have to manifest into a tumor or a, a full-blown like arthritis or something. It can open, open, open out. But so are you dealing with, are you talking to a lot of people that have physical symptoms? Is oh, this sure. physical or is this energetic or is it both or? I work, I, if so back, so I call myself a somatic intuitive now because what I'm actually doing is I feel, sense, and know um, the connection between um, what you're saying and what's happening in your body. So I read language like a, like a language um, in a very different way than other people do. I've always heard things in the way people talk, which give me pictures in my, um, I, I talk about this little room, this bright room of awareness that opens on the right side of my awareness. And pictures start to talk to me about, just because I'm listening to the language someone's using, because we're, we're, sort of temp we're in time or temporal beings but we're also spatial beings so if i talk about something as that took me back or i step back from that or rather someone might say to me i want to step back from work rather than i want to quit my job that's language that's spatial right so little clues like that which help me see them in a holographic frame i'm seeing everyone in a sphere basically and I'm noticing what's moving in the sphere around them um, and also in the expression of that in the body, which is sort of the physical level of what's happening in the etheric, right? Am, am I getting too like oh. cosmic? But so that, that's give, what happens. Give me a story because I like, um, like examples. I like like examples. 
Okay. Uh, so my favorite story isn't about any of what I just said. It's about one of my earliest clients um, who worked for um, uh, the coach, remember the coach uh, handbag company, mm -hmm. right? And so they had a big fire, like, I don't know, 10 years ago, where the whole building caught on fire. And my client was going through all kinds of fire in her own life. And so there was this weird constellation between what was happening in the office and what was happening in her own life, where we realized that her life was on fire. And it's not that she manifested the fire and caused the fire in at Coach, right? It's that um, the story was in alignment with what was happening in the outside around her, right? So we could point to what was happening around her and use that metaphorically for what was happening inside of her. So that's one of my favorite, from my point of view, stories. But another one is um, also from that period of time, a client who um, called me because she was experiencing an incredible amount of fear and grief around leaving her cat for I think she had to go for two months overseas and she she just couldn't figure out what like what's this about like it doesn't make any sense that i'm i don't want to put him in a shelter i don't want to leave him with my um, friend or so there was just a too much feeling around it and it was kind of making her crazy and she had to get on the plane soon so because she was traveling for two months for work and so we just started talking, and what we realized was, um, and it sort of didn't happen till the end, and I kept talking to her about the cat and her attachment to the cat and sort of trying to find it. But what I kept hearing, and, and here's where I'm giving you sort of what I see, I kept feeling this blank spot on the left in her story. So she, we were building a story. I could see it building. I could see her and the left side of her was kind of blank. And I kept saying, tell me about um, husband. Tell me about brother. Tell me, because it felt masculine, right? What's going on? And I don't know why it feels masculine. It's just that side feels masculine in her. I might feel it on the other side in another client. But at that time, I just kept and then maybe we were, my session's an hour or 75 minutes long. We might have been 50 minutes in. And she said um, something like, and this is where language is so interesting to me. She said something like, and also I have to deal with all this shit around my, husband, my uh, father's funeral before I, go, before I go away for two months. And I was like, left side on fire, suddenly awake, you know, huge opening, right? And she didn't feel anything. Didn't so feel she put all anything. of the energy into the cat. She projected all of the pain into the cat. Right. And all the loss into the cat. And also, the, I forget to say this earlier, the cat was becoming more and more ill. Because often our animals, I've, I've noticed our animals will help us express things. So we'll caretake an animal when we can't caretake a human where we have some wounding. We sort of, we create this proxy. Um, it's almost like I'm sleeping with the, the doll that I made for my daughter right now because I'm holding her. Even though she's in California, I can't hold her in safety. So I just have this doll because I know that my psyche is sending energy to her while I hold this doll. Right? Yeah, so we can do it consciously like I'm describing or unconsciously like the woman with the cat, right? Interesting. So what we did with her, we had to get around that numbness, right, around the dad. And so we, you know, of course it's personal, I won't talk more about that, but um, we went through the cat to get to the dad, right? right. So the cat is not just a symbol, it's, an, it's like the doll. I can s s send love to my daughter through this object, through this being. And you could say, lot, I know lots of people who do work like me might say, 
the cat volunteered for that. And who's to say? Who's to say, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. So there, there are some stories. Yeah. <laughs> so um, tell me how your cards uh, develop in, in connection to this. Because, you know, I, wait, did I show you my box? Well, no, yeah, no, show show no, everyone no, else watching my video, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> but they will. So, um, so I I had this box that I made. It's it's so funny because it's connected to so many people. Um, it started. These are my friend uh, Maggie's hands. Maggie's a yoga teacher. Um, Maggie and I love to talk about range, and so it's really important to me that it has her her bracelets from India, but her Cartier bracelet as well. And wow. that's, that's how we think. Anyway, um, I made this as a piece of art. I put it up on the wall in my office, just the picture. Um, if I were up there, I'd show it to you. And um, I have it on my wall somewhere, by the way. Go ahead, sorry. Oh, and, <laughs> well, so then she said, um, um, Annette saw it and she loved it printed on the wood and she said, could you um, do that smaller so I could put it on my altar? And I said, indeed I can. <laughs> so, uh, so I made it smaller. I have some in walnut, some are in maple. And so it's a box, which means you can put your goodies in it. Yeah. And guess what we have right there? Yay, my cards. <laughs> so Here, I'll hold up my cards. I had a, I had a reading with a really wonderful tarot reader recently because i was so overwhelmed when this uh virus started yeah you know, like shelter. we all we all were and not be, not because like i'm exactly like you my life has not changed i still have all day every day at my computer inside i never no. see anybody i mean if i go to new york city i see more people in a minute no 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 then i but see but it's people. not <laughs> yeah but it's, it's not, not, like, not that it's not personal. This is a this is a collective event. The right. the collective psyche of humanity right. has to stay home in their room, right. so that this invisible virus doesn't. Right. I know, hilarious, right? Right. So, so this I've been, is. So I was feeling it in a feeling of overwhelm. Couldn't yes. focus on anything. Didn't know like what the heck. And but then and and then I started to have little like. Bing, 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 bing. Like, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. Like, like I needed to do something bigger. Mm -hmm. um, that my first thought was I need to do something bigger or more important or whatever that word was. Mm. And, and of course, so many of my friends are set up for this. You know, they're set up to <laughs> broadcast bigger and, you know, yep. They could, they were, they could hold it. I kept thinking of you because you and your containers, you know, you're always talking about having larger containers. And I was like, my container's not big enough. <laughs> I don't know. What and mean. yet, and yet. And, and then look, well, and so here's the crazy thing. I, um, I had the, I posted in, I think it was that B-School Woo Woo group uh, that I was overwhelmed. I had f at least five choices of, you know, and I'm, plus I'm in a branding class. So I'm trying to figure out how to brand myself after 30 years of doing this. <laughs> Like, so I had, you know, five different projects to do. Uh, should I do this one, this one, this one? And this wonderful woman pops in and says, why don't I give you a tarot reading? <laughs> and I was like, why not? And she said, because you helped me so much with something, something. And I was like, I did? When? This is what's happening. I had no can I just Can I underline that though? Can, for, cause for people watching, that's what this energy is. This energy is all around um, coming together collectively, supporting one another, competition is melting, we're starting to come into a circular form, which is much more feminine, rather than a competitive hierarchical, like, no one's envious of each other as much, not no one, but that's what's melting, envy is melting, co-creation, yeah. co-creativity is, is rising, so oh. you'll see much more of that. Yeah, and I, what you're doing. I have felt it. I felt en envy melting. I also felt um, discernment mm -hmm. um, sort of coming forward because there isn't time for all of it. Yep. And, and obviously the whole message of, you know, we're all going to die, people. <laughs> Newsflash. <laughs> we're all going to die. 
maybe not this time, maybe not this virus, but this time we're all thinking maybe this time, maybe this virus. So like there's this whole, that was my post this morning was about like, if not now, when? Like, yeah. Yeah. Step up. And, you know, what have I, why have I been so quiet? Same with you. Why have you been so quiet? So here we are. This is hilarious. This is like only my whatever fourth or fifth conversation like this. And we're the two shyest people I know. We're not really shy. Not at all. (laughs) No, we're shy people. But we we're like, we never had any desire to be on camera and do anything public. That's so not us. But guess what? We're, We're leaders who were supposed to be doing this. Right. We just couldn't figure out how to do it without having to, like, do this. <laughs> right. Right. Well, we, I, you know, personally, I wanted it to be more perfect or more something. More something, perfect. Way more perfect. Way more like. But also, know, also mine, mine, <laughs> <laughs> mine has to be all completely perfect, which is why I'm going to come back to what you said earlier about the person who says, I just want to show up as me. If yeah. the minute I try to do something... I start to become so perfected that the layer of makeup you would see on me would be so thick and so ridiculous that I, because I couldn't perfect it. Right. I could never erase all my flaws. Aren't you glad for those people that never wear makeup? So we're like, oh yeah, I'm just not even going to worry about that part. (laughs) That's me. And also you, you taught me about light. So, you know, light is great makeup. Light Actually. is great. Light is the best makeup. That's so I only do daylight conversations because mm-hmm. you know the mm-hmm. sun is better light than every light. Yes. Um, and I should be facing the sun. I know no, you No, but that. yours is working because yours is bouncing. Yours has a very soft, like nice glow to it. It's not too hard, it's not too one direction or another. And then the backlight gives you a halo, which you deserve anyway. So ah. there you go. <laughs> like, this Look at that. Not, not everyone can do that because uh, if they don't understand what's in front, I don't know what's in front of you. It must be another window or I think there's another. No, I have window. a light. I have a halo light in front of me. Are you serious? Yeah, oh. I do. I have a professional light like because I'm doing all this video. I can move it. Wow. I can change the color. See, it's better now. I moved it. Wow. That's amazing. Well, I actually I closed some of my curtain because I'm in my living room and it's super hot in here. Like here, I'm gonna take a layer off, um, it's, um, because it's so. Yeah, the colors you're wearing are great, by the way. Oh yeah, these are well. These are my. Can I just tell you something crazy? I had a yes. blouse. I actually, I think that's in my giveaway pile now. But I had a blouse in my closet that was this teal color, very much like this color. Because years ago, I learned that two of the best colors you can wear on camera are teal and purple. Purple. Okay. Just, they're just very good on a lot of skin tones. And so, you know, it's, it was always in my mind as a default, like when I'm on TV, I'm going to have <laughs> I had a blouse in my closet that was ready for the day that I was going to like go on TV. And then, I have two, two outfits for that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And now I'm using like an Oprah cover of a magazine to hold up my TV. <laughs> yeah. Well, and Oprah's not on TV anymore. So <laughs> we missed that, right? Yeah, I didn't notice. But here we are. We're all on our own TV. We're all on our own TV. YouTube, we made our own TV. YouTube was so well named. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Um, but, but here we are. Oh, anyway, <laughs> you're talking about your card. So, so here's the oh, okay. so Nat told me to make an altar piece. So I did. And then I was, then I got the tarot reading. The woman said of all of my projects, the boxes were the thing. And I, you know, I call them gratitude. I was calling them gratitude boxes because of that. Um, The picture was always called Namaste. And for me, that speaks to what I do as a photographer. You know, the light in me sees the light in you. And it just all made sense. And then I woke up the morning after the tarot reading feeling so clear, like, oh, Thank God I can drop those book projects because those feel exhausting to me. And I was happy to just drop other like Tanya's crazy ideas on the side. This idea had not even happened yet. And she said, do the boxes 
and you know, I got like the high priestess card and some other things and everything was like, go, go, go. And then I pulled my own cards that morning and I started to do what you and I did a couple of times on the phone where I lay out a set of cards and then I lay your cards on top or I start with your cards and I put, you know, Colette Baron Reed's cards on top or then we grab a goddess card and I was like, oh, now I have a box to store all my different cards at the same time. And so that made wow. me happy. So right now on top, oh, of course, here's, here's the two cards I have for you. Bridge Jewel. Oh, <laughs> all right, wait, <laughs> let me pick two cards for you. Let's see what comes up. Bridge and Jewel. Yeah. Well, so. So now you can tell us about how the cards really are. Oh, and there's they, one more that wants to speak. <laughs> Bridge Jewel O. Oh. oh, I'm writing that down. Wait, let me write it down. Because if we're going to do a reading, let's do a reading. Okay. Bridge Jewel Heart. So I'm going to say right, right away, that's what happens between us. Right? Always. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Always. Always. And we've known each other for, what, 10 years? Eight years? Something like that? A oh, long time. Eight years. It was 2012. I long remember. Time. Because it was... I called you because I was going to Marie Forleo's event in New York City. I was going for my birthday, so that was October. It, I don't know why I remember it was 2012. I saw you on somebody else's blog and she wrote some story about you. And just, you know, it's just a rabbit hole thing. I just mm -hmm. click, 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 and I called you. And I, I think I even said, or at least I was thinking, I need to speak to you before I go to this event because I don't oh, yes. feel, I didn't feel big enough to go to that yes, event. I didn't yes. feel ready to go to that event. And I don't know why I thought you were going to help me get there, uh, which is, it's kind of crazy. Um, and the event was called Rich, Happy and Hot. And I, oh, know, yes. and I think oh, yes. Marie did it twice. Maybe it was mm -hmm. at the Donna Karen's Urban Zen building in new york city which has yes. meaning for both of us yes it does. um i can't believe that you weren't at that event in some ways but at rich hat and happy yeah. i couldn't afford it i wanted to be there and so i think part of what drew us together was i really wanted to go but again i couldn't be big enough to go and so you were talking about you didn't feel big enough and i was living literally couldn't wasn't big enough because we had two kids in college or whatever wow. and um i was like i can't pay for it i can't go i didn't know that I, so i didn't even know that you wanted to go um yeah. well because i'm a professional and it was about you the call was about you <laughs> but i did want to go in fact when you gave me the date just then i'm 2012 i i did a little mental math and said like i have to because i'm writing a book about my own spiritual development and I needed that date of when I couldn't go to retire so I had to make a note for my wow for my story well yeah because I remember I remember you having to pull some red thread out of me I suppose that's why the uh, ball of yarn has always stuck with me um, because oh, there was interesting. something you were pulling out of me that was like undoing a kind of knot that needed to be undone in order for me to go to that yeah thing well so if i was doing that it came from the language that you were using oh, so if you were using God. language you were <laughs> you might have been saying i feel tangled up or yeah. so because the image for the image i can work with forms for, I, i'm but, I'm basically doing what um, a narrative counselor does, someone who's been trained in the work of David Grove, for example, which I discovered after I started doing it. And I was able to sort of read his work and kind of hone in, um, perfect mine a little more, you know, polish it a little more. But I had this natural sense, which he had, that we speak, we, we speak the metaphors that we live inside of, right? So, so if you're talking about being all tangled up, 
I'm seeing you tangled up, but I'm seeing the tangling around you because it's limiting you. Because the other image that I get almost always from a client who calls me with a problem to solve is I'm in this box, it's shaped like this, it feels like this. And so, right, these are the limits in front of me, these are the limits to the sides why I can't change this way, I can't change laterally, I can't change future, I can't change what's behind me, and I'm in a box. So it's interesting that you have a box there, isn't it? Interesting. So, so does the container image apply to everyone? Does everyone, everyone. see themselves in a container? We, we are a container. Right. Well, no, but you're the one who changes. See, that's what you do. You change the language of it. You, you, well, shift the, you break the container or shift the container. You do. You do it. I change the image with you. Right. So, so here's my proposition. Right? Um, each of us is a consciousness, a light. That's it, and in, and so and each of us dwells inside right now of a container called a body, and that body is inside of a frame or an egg of energy, um, and but really what we are is that light, and that light is um, is several things. Of course, it's incredibly important. Like it's very complex, but to simplify it one of the things that that light does is generate an image of self, right? And so here you are working with self-image all the time in your work, well, so am I, because what I'm actually doing with a client is trying to listen for the self-image inside of which the person believes they live, right? So it's not true that they are that image, but they believe that they are. They, and they believe that because they've interacted with the world for this many years as that image, and that it, the world has responded to them as that image, which gives them evidence that they are that image. Um, when they try to change it, the box comes up and limits them. So it's very clear to them, this is real. But what I do, and I think what Sue does, and Kyle does, and all the teachers that you work with, is we're addressing the image, right? So we're, we're, I'm saying to you say, I feel tangled up, I'm at the center of a ball of yarn or whatever language you use. And I say, well, maybe not. Let's take a look. Tell me about the yarn. What color is it? What texture is it? Where is it on your body? Yeah, so I can get a, a, frame, a sense of what your experiencing and then we move you one of the things david grove taught me is we move you look to the left turn again look behind you turn mm -hmm. again look to the right and so as you begin to shift perspective where's the yarn now where's the yarn now right so we're we're addressing an image always it's never something real ever Right. Like someone oh, might say, I feel like I'm drowning. I'm like, well, you're talking to me. Right. Right. But also, so, um, and then you get to the place where you say, but we're all creating our own realities. Right. I don't, I don't often say that. It's a big concept in an hour. I don't actually, I'm writing a book about that, but right. I don't often say that in a session. What I say well, is. I agree. I agree. It would be too much if you were still, if you're still in the what, the problem or the tangle or whatever but i think right. you know once you've been at it long enough you start to realize that the it was the original light that created all of it the no the the light has so for me there's there's the light and there's the um There are so many different ways to talk about this. You see what I'm pausing because do I want to say the ego or not? Right? Like, so, because I want to talk about this as a, in a way, um, there's a multiplicity here. Um, and all of the different qualities that we are um, work together. And so the light is more like, you could think of it as, the bit of God self, 
in in um, in Torah they say each of us is is a drop a yod, right? That little like comma that's on a lot of Jewish writing. Mm -hmm. Each of us is a yod, that f a little flame, bit of fire that fell from heaven, and we build this self around that. Right? It's kind of a Kabbalah concept. So who's um, we? We build the self around it. Well, that's who's that's the. the well, the impulse is for me, that's why I call myself soul caller, right? Because there's the there's a soul and then there's the call that the soul the soul makes out. And then there's the world calling to the soul that draws it out. So there's the soul is calling outward and the world is calling the soul outward and then the soul is calling the world inward. So it's all about this center point. And, you know, in yoga and in martial arts, they talk about the hara, right? And so there's that central point where it's sort of per per perceived by people who perceive such things that it's just below the heart, just above the belly button. There's this core self and that that radiates out. And that's, that's a fire quality. So it's like a sun inside each of us radiating out the question is mind and hara are having a conversation so mind is saying but what am i but what am i but how should i say that but what should i wear what color looks good right and hara is saying will you photograph me <laughs> right yes. but hara is saying the best example i have is hara tells me all the time you have to, you have this thing you have to say so how are you going to get it out there when you're so freaking shy, right? So how are we going to get that message out? Well, write a book, make some cards, try this, try that, invite people over. Like, how do I work with this hara, this self, this soul that wants to radiate a message out? Because I heard you're in your last video, something you said that was really beautiful. I can do so much more. Mm. That was such a powerful sentence, I think, for what's happening in everybody's home right now. Mm -hmm. Here we are, all alone. Everyone, I mean, the first two weeks was, how can I distract myself from this boredom, right? Like, I can't do my all my little things I do, all my little addictions, right? right. Like, one of mine was like, every time I would get bored, I would jump up and run to the store. And get an ingredient for tonight's dinner. Right? <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> right. So, so um, yeah. So we can't do that. So that so was the first, first phase for, well, the way you see it was. For everyone. Drop the addictions. Well, I think I so. Think we dropped them, but. No, 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 we haven't. We've, now we're looking for other ones. But, right. but there's a quieting process. Let's just, I'll cut to the chase. We, we are we are sent in sent inside we're like all like crazy like what am i going to do here what am i going to do here I'm, I'm not here this is i don't want to be here oh. if you think of that metaphorically i don't want to be here with myself is what's happening i'm and a lot of people are only with themselves and it's lonely and and isolating right so um there are all kinds of creative ways of that people like me and you are popping up with, how can we connect? What can we, how can we show up for people? Mm -hmm. um, but there's also the impulse that runs parallel for me. And I think for others, how can I um, not show up? I don't have to save everyone. I don't have to do, I don't have to fix this. This is not a problem. This is a process. Or an opportunity. Yeah. For me, this is an opportunity to what have the courage I didn't have before, um, or to or to be the extension of the thing I was always doing, but couldn't figure out. And now that everyone's in the same mess, it's okay. It's I don't know. It's um, well. What's the impulse if we if we go to the the light? And what's, what is it in you that needed so much to 
express itself that it just broke the wall and decided to do this? Um, That's the question. Yeah, what was that? That was... It wasn't really Alec Baldwin. But... <laughs> <laughs> Blame Alec Baldwin. I know. It's I, great. I, I'm going to blame him till the end of time, which is super funny because you know the back. I you know the backstory on him, right? No, I have no back. Is there a backstory on you and Alec Baldwin? When, well, no, between me and Alec Baldwin. Um, when I first came out to Sag Harbor, and I sort of decided I'm done with the wedding. Well, I wasn't, oh, you know what it was? It was right after 9-11. It was, and okay. so there were no weddings. There was no wedding photography to be done. Um, so I started doing my pictures of water. And I, uh, that was just like, that lit me up. I was super happy. Um, in fact, one of those pictures is that picture, which is very yeah. hard to see. And that it's actually sideways. And it, so it sort of looks like, let's see if I, eh. Hold on. But it, the crazy here, there, that's there. That's the picture. Yeah. That's pretty good. Um, it looks like fire, right? It's water, yes. but it looks like fire. And it's there's a leaf on top of the surface and it was shot at a pond nearby. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Sidetrack. Um as I did the series, I had them at a little show in Bridgehampton. Then I had a show, I don't know which came first. Then I had a show at the Corcoran Real Estate Office, which, you know, if you're a photographer with an ego, you do not show your pictures at a real estate office. <laughs> but my dear friend who was a broker said, we want to start doing something for the community. And I said, sign me up, I'll do it. And I, so, you know, I sold the whole show to one architect. And then the newspaper did a story about me. So I was in the East Hampton Star, huge piece. It was, it was inside but it was, uh, you know, like half a page above the fold. The picture of me was, you know, this big. Wow. Yeah. And, and not only that, I didn't know there was going to be a picture of me. I thought it was going to be a picture of my pictures. So I was so unprepared. I'm like, are you kidding? This is what I'm wearing today? I hate this outfit. <laughs> I was sort of horrified. Um, and I let this writer take a picture of me. I, Cause I, you know, I said, Oh, I'll send you something. And she was like, no, 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 I'm going to take a picture. So, you know, it was horrifying on every level. <laughs> and it came out huge story, really nice. So flattering. And Alec Baldwin called me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. He would, he would remember this. He called me and said, and I'm sorry, but if you ever receive a phone call and you're like, hi, this is Alec Baldwin, you're like, yeah, right. <laughs> like, that doesn't happen. Um, and I don't know how this happened, and I don't know how I just thought this was normal. And we just started talking, and he said, oh, the story was about my pictures, but it was called Healing Through Photography. Oh, Isn't that right. ironic, right? And it was about me healing the 9-11 trauma through photography, doing these water pictures, sort of as meditations and everything else. But I think what he read was, you know, recently divorced photographer, <laughs> you know, recovering from, because I was recovering from that too. That's legit. Um, and so he called and said he wanted, I guess he, remember he was just getting divorced kind of around oh. that time as well. I mean, no okay. one, if you remember that, but um, so he wanted to do a book about divorce and he wondered if I would photograph people for this book. And we had this long conversation and we have friends in common and some of my clients are people who know and love him personally and, and have the most amazing things to say about how smart he is and everything else. Um, but he wanted to do a book about divorce and I just thought, I don't know about that. <laughs> like, and, and by the way, really, like, who do you think is going to let me photograph them in any way for a book about divorce? That made no Did sense. Did he do it? I th think he might have done the book, but I think it was just written, you know, and I think it was, he was, whatever, it was just him processing mm -hmm. his own divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And it would have been cool, but it would have taken me three more steps to figure out how to make that work. And it wasn't, it didn't happen anyway. Yeah. yeah. So then the book didn't happen. I'm going to say it was a year later. I remember walking on the street in Sag Harbor and I saw him and I was like, oh, that's Alec Baldwin. And so I went, I doubled back and I like introduced myself because we'd never met in person. He'd just seen, seen the picture of me. I said, oh, hey, you called me. You remember? And he's like, of course I remember you. I was like, okay, well, bye. <laughs> that was it. That was the whole, that's the whole story. Um, so I, the idea I, that I would be inspired by something he said to be doing this is a very weird full circle. And if you just take out. Tell me the time frame of the other one, 9-11. So that was 20 2011. Years, 20 years ago, 19 years ago. Well, no, I did the pictures in probably 02. So we're talking about 18 years. Okay. Seven, so, years. But time, there's no time, so. Well, no, there, there's no time. Time is flat, of course. Well, time is spherical. Right. right? And, um, but I'm thinking of it as a kind of a grace mm -hmm. note that he, he is part of some sort of pattern that you share. Mm -hmm. And if we could track it, we, will find, we would find it. But um, mm -hmm. the invitation, my phone is like blowing up. Why? Sorry. <laughs> the invitation um, from him to come out then is just like the invitation to come out now. Oh and then you yeah. said no. But oh. this time you're ready for whatever reason. Isn't that this time you, your container is big enough, you might say. And last time I was 20 years younger, way thinner. Like, you know, those pants don't even exist in my wardrobe as a <laughs> I don't even wish for those pants anymore. <laughs> how far away they are. I mean, that's kind of crazy. But think about that. So he's just, he is that. So imagine him now as a, a card uh, in a deck of cards, mm. nothing more, mm -hmm. right? So he's a he's a symbol. Mm -hmm. He's a uh, you could say I drew the Alec Baldwin card. Right. And what does that mean? It means opportunity to do some new form of something. He right? could be his own tarot card. <laughs> yeah, but that's in your story. That you it's it. kind you know, it's kind of what he shows up as. Right, that's super yeah. interesting. He's a very, it's a very interesting story given what we've been talking about, actually. Hmm, very interesting, huh? Only and with you know you, what? With you do all these connections get connected, well, but look at the cards I drew for you, and I, I had them face down, okay? Right? So I, I don't, I just picked them up and said, Oh, yeah. before this conversation. Right, because you pulled three. You pulled what you call bridge, jewel, heart, mm -hmm. which is what we are together for each other, in some way. Which I, you know, we could go into, but we're on already for over an hour. But um, <laughs> um, so, isn't it interesting? So here's journey, mm -hmm. right? Fire. And boundary. So right away, I see this Alec Baldwin connection, right? Like he says, "Come, let's let's try this new thing. Let's take a trip together." And you are like, "That's hot. I'm not doing that. That's too hot to go there." And you say, "No, nope, not right now." Isn't that interesting? Interesting. And it means ten other things, or a hundred other things as well. But that's just interesting in terms of that story. Wow. You know, you, those cards, they made me think of a, just a tiny little nugget in addition to that story, because when I first, um, when I was first shooting weddings, I was somehow aware that he was getting married out mm -hmm. here. And I didn't live out here at the time, but I had friends in common who could have, you know, made the introduction or, I could have been his wedding photographer to Kim Bassinger, but that didn't happen. Those connections didn't happen. Was that before or after he called? Way before, because that was when he was getting married. 
to Kim, right? Yeah, but when then, he got married, and I, I think he and I got married around the same time, which is also weird. Um, yeah, that's why I'm just going to come right out and say, no wonder you, did, you didn't want to play with them, because you could have become the next Mrs. Baldwin, the way this is laying itself out. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, and, yeah. I, and, I, and I couldn't have. I couldn't, like, that would not have been my... That's uh, not your path. Not at all. And so, so, oh, I see. So you're saying, like, getting involved in the book or something could have been... Oh, boundary. Yeah, well, fire boundary. You were like, no, no, I can't do that. I have a different future. Um, you just, something on us knows, right? Right. And now, and, also, and now he's married to a yogi, which puts him in a very different uh, space and, and mindset and frame. And, right. And I've right. been to that, a similar version, but my story. Um, and also, I mean, if you had wound up together, how, I mean, what am I talking about? This is absolute fantasy, right? But you, this is that conversation about range again. It would have... The range works, right? So, like he he has his his world is big and shiny. So is yours, right? So, there's a way that you you could keep up with each other. Um, yeah, there's so a lot. Not, of, there's a lot of overlapping characters. A lot of overlap. I get that. Um, right. My my point being not to belabor it because it's not real. Right. Right. But that there are these there are these um, pulsations in the collective that bring us together at certain times and right. right like like i wanted to go to rich hot happy or whatever it was called mm -hmm. and i didn't go right and out of the blue this woman i've never met before calls me to talk about that and i'm like okay it's in so my it's in my field aware of it before i called you oh i'm sure i'm sure i was and it's right near me it's like like it's near you also it's an hour away from where oh, i live i lived in atlanta oh you did that was a hike for me i had to pay for the event pay for a hotel fly to new york and that's how important it was to me it felt like a lifeline yeah. um, because i was living in the story of drowning in atlanta i mean that was you know how i felt about my life at the time mm -hmm. well for me it was it felt the same way because I thought that I would never be rich, hot, and happy if I didn't go because I had this still this externalized, right? Which, how long ago was this? Mm -hmm. Also 18 years ago? Eight years. Eight no, years no. ago. Yeah. I had this externalized idea of if I can absorb enough um, inf um, radiance from other powerful people, if I can read enough books, if I can absorb enough like of their radiance, then I can be radiant too. So my light was still, I still didn't have a connection to the truth about what I am. Yeah. Right. So now, in like when I look at the pattern in my own story, I, I was never allowed to go to things like that, allowed by me as I was, you know, I don't think about it as like the angels didn't let me go, but more like those doors were shut to me. Fate, you know, my fate was different than that because I have to learn to radiate from within, not absorb radiance from others and copy it. Right. Right. Which this is for me, that's the thing I always saw in you. I always saw you as the equal to anyone who was on that stage. You told me how much I was going to like Danielle Laporte. <laughs> and, uh, she was on the stage. Ramit Sethi was on the stage. Simon Sinek was on the stage. Chris Carr was on the stage. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Julie Cotino, Patino was on the stage for Brand Twist. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, I would take knowing you over any of like any of that, any of those. The, yeah. Yeah, but like it's a, there's have, a, like so I could see that you had the magic and the power, without a doubt. Yeah, but I get. Thank that you, you. Didn't feel like. So let me say so it's really clear. What they are is absolutely brilliant. So what Marie Forleo is, 
um, in all of her, um, all that she offers, what Danielle is and all that she offers is beautiful, but I would never be that. I would never want to be that, but I thought I was supposed to be that. Yes. So this is where we have that kind of false self coming in and saying, you're supposed to be that. And if you're going to be successful, you have to, this is the only model that I saw for that. There weren't, so I kept, there weren't any other models. Yeah, so we were inventing right. how to be online, how to teach online. So for me, after all that, and there was, it was a disappointment, but right after that, um, all my own work came in. Yeah. All of it, right? So, that, or right before that, it was right at that same time that the soul caller training came in and all my understanding, I was, you know, you know the story of that. My work came in in one download and I just, had it and it came into my body and I've just unpacked it ever since. I keep speaking it, speaking it as it radiates open through me. That's a very different experience than, I, let me say it very clearly because people are watching if we hope. Um, <laughs> One person might watch. <laughs> yes, but when they do, they'll get this clearly. Um, that my my work came to me i was sleeping and i had been praying and praying and praying like i i feel like something is moving around me that's asking to sort of come through me i'm ready and i started to get big migraines and all kinds of physical symptoms that i understand now where all the energy starting to move and open up my body so that my physical container what would be able to have the capacity to bring that energy through um, but it was also my fear and resistance to that energy that created the contraction so all that said as the all of that was happening i was still praying and praying and asking for give me more power basically is what i was saying and also, and I, I'll use it. I have integrity. I'll direct it well, you know. I want to see more. I want to know more. I want to be the fullness. I'm mean, use your language. I can do so much more. Hmm. I'm volunteering for the team, right? And up till then, I had worked for um, Doreen Virtue, studied with Carolyn Mace. You know, I was Doreen's ghostwriter for 10 years, for heaven's sake. So there was this always, like, I, it had moved through me, but it wasn't mine. Does that make sense? Yes. I was doing Carolyn's work, but it wasn't mine. Right. Right. Carolyn Mace's work. Um, and, and others as well. So there were more before that. So, but there was this feeling like I could do that. I, but I had no sense of what's my work. And then I woke up one night and after all that, working and thinking and studying and something formed itself and gave itself to me fully finished i was doing it all in background or or it was given to me by the angels which was what my experience was like a ball of light offered on you know invisible um middle of the night opened my eyes there was this writing in the air and this glowing ball and I said yes and it went right into my body and began to radiate out you don't know that story no oh, we find yeah. the story that's my story yeah oh wow yeah I know and so was that just a couple years ago Five, eight. Two, I don't remember the year. It's written down in a hundred places, but I don't remember it right now. But it was, I had just written my book about writing for Doreen. I wrote the, my guardian angel column for 10 years. And um, in the process of doing that, I began to have this sense of angels are real. I could see them. I could feel them. I could hear them. I was having dreams. They were bringing me all kinds of information through dreams. I had this little dream professor who would come sometimes with a clipboard and classes like Einstein and crazy hair and a white lab coat 
and he would show me, he would have this flip chart and he would draw images on the flip chart of shapes and forms. And I would wake up knowing things that I didn't know before I went to sleep just because the shape contained the in information. So I'm claircognizant, I'm clairsentient, right? I'm clair, 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 whatever those things mean. I didn't know any of this at the time. But so every word, every image is pregnant with information. And so you bring it inside and it vibrates through the organism and it has an effect, right? You learn from that. That's why now if I buy a book, I know that if I don't finish it, I can just hold it and know a lot of what the, I, I won't have the stories, but I'll have the energy of it. The energy of it. Yeah. And, inf and I'll have information that I can use also. Me and I talk about that, that, you know, it's one of the reasons to keep them on your bedside table because really you're still getting the energy of the book and the teacher who's holding who's a placeholder for that energy mm -hmm. the teacher has sort of volunteered has offered herself or himself to hold the space for the transmission of that energy and my so again from my perspective the energy isn't necessarily coming from like you know guides or mystical beings although often it is it's also coming from the collective so there are people like me like you who read the collective pulse mm -hmm. the zeitgeist like malcolm gladwell is a perfect example um they just feel what's moving in the world and then they just make it into something right and they hold the space for that movement to move which other people can take in through their speeches, their writing. Which right. for me, that's the point, like that whole lineup that Marie had, you know, this like amazing lineup. But if you, if you put those people on a pedestal and try to be them, you will always fall short. And as they all would have told you. As they would say, exactly, exactly. Right. None of them would say, you know, be like me. Everyone would say, be like you. Be like you. Be like you. And so, you know, that's why, I think that's why we go to these events is to learn a bunch of ways that other people are being and then, oh, okay. Now I have the ingredients. What am I going to make? Exactly. Um, because, you know, I, I look at the kinds of ingredients I've been taking in for a really long time. Um, I mean, I, yeah, that's a whole other story, but watching, taking in, observing this, you know, connecting these two people together, like it all fits in a funny way. Mm -hmm. um, but, but you're also, you sell yourself short if you say all that I was taking in because you're part of the, the alchemy that's happening when you're with that person. Yes. No, absolutely. And no, that's because that's why I say it takes two people to make a photograph. The photograph, yeah. it isn't. So that, that's why it's funny. I had that uh, big issue over copyright and ownership um, of a bunch of my photos. Um, and I said, look, the photos, they don't exist without me. That's right. Everyone thinks that a photo of a famous person is about the famous person. I look at the picture and I see the relationship. You know, I look at these old pictures of Princess Diana with Mario Testino and I see the connection between them. I see the yeah. love that he had for her and she had for him. And it's not about her. There are 10 million pictures of Princess Diana out there. It's like Pete Sousa with Obama. It's Pete it's Sousa with Obama. There is, it's not about Obama and it's not about Pete Sousa. It's the magic that happens together and only he could get those. And that's right. And that's what my friend Karen was trying to teach me how to do that for myself, because when you're in the bottle, it's super hard to read the label, right? So I'm in my bottle, unable to say why a photo is mine or special or, you know, yes. I, I don't think they are. I think they are, um, this is just my normal. And Karen kept saying, show me the photo that only you can take. And I said, what the hell is that? Wow. <laughs> like, I don't know what that is. And she said, well, there's a, 
I don't know, there's a certain intimacy that only you can have with these people. And I want to see that. I want to see the little intimate, private, like somebody trusts you. And I'm like, well, I can't show you that picture <laughs> because, because I can't break the trust. Um, but that's what I'm gearing toward is working with people who would allow me to share those intimate private because for 20 years I shot intimate private that can't be shared. Yeah. Um, me too. And that's, yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's a little that's bit. Why, yeah. Wait. When you say to me, yeah. When you say to me, tell me a story, I'm going, which ones can I tell? Which ones can I tell? Right. It's not that I don't have stories. Mm -hmm. It's that they're, I'm a counselor, right? So they're all, they're all private. Yeah. And I love um, private's important. Um, and yeah. so is connection. And I'll bet your battery's, my battery's about to die. My well, my, I'm plugged in, but we've been oh. talking a long time. You're going to have some editing to do. I think. Oh, no, I don't edit. I like gave that up. Oh, yeah. okay, great. <laughs> Originally, I was going to edit. And then Alex, uh, on the first one with Stuart, um, I got three different messages from three different people saying, oh, why don't you just put it out and don't edit? And I thought, all right, well. I agree. Take that that's what I'm doing. Yeah, so people get it. People know what YouTube is. People understand what's happening. Yeah. The, and and I I think we really want to see real people sitting around talking and we want to see the silences between them and the awkwardness. We want to see Jimmy Fallon's daughter messing up his joke again. We want to see that. Yeah. Because we I you know what? I I'll never forget Jennifer Garner saying to Jimmy Fallon on the show he asked her, like, how are you holding up over there? You know, and she's like, well, we're all learning to use the vacuum cleaner. Like, I, why, hi. Okay. <laughs> she, so she said, you know, like regular interruptions and, you know, <laughs> regular things happening. I just thought that was my prompt. This is my husband, the architect, which <laughs> we're recording. Nice chair. Isn't oh, that a beautiful chair? You. All right, I'm going back before I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> wash your hands um <laughs> just doing my job all right um, so i just got the note that um this is gonna die if i don't plug it in no no go ahead. let's let's end it we can end it goodbye no we'll just you know to be continued <laughs> all right i'll come back anytime okay you're anytime. gonna be you're gonna be one of my regulars on my show <laughs> i'll be a regular i'll be like gail king with oprah awesome. <laughs> we'll go on road trips together <laughs> sure why not without makeup <laughs> without, with like really beautiful blue clothing though <laughs> yeah teal or purple clothing but teal no or makeup because it makes our skin look nice <laughs> all right okay all right good deal all right i love you goodbye i love you miss amy thank you for this lovely conversation thank you bye bye